lifting up Jesus and opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Okay. Some years ago, on our refutation of Joel's army, we issued a recorded teaching, still available in the public domain, called Joel's army, and we explain this issue, this question, in some length or some depth. I'd have to refer you back to that teaching, Joel's army. In Peter's kerygma on the day of Pentecost, he didn't say, this is that, but he uses the language of analogy, this is like that. What transpired on the day of Pentecost was a harbinger of something to transpire at the end of the age. It will be in the character of it. We saw none of Joel's actual predictions about the sun and moon not giving their light taking place on the day of Pentecost. Jesus said in the Olivet Discourse, those things would happen at the end of the age. You did not have that kind of phenomena. There was nothing there about dreams. There was nothing there about visions. There was the phenomena of glossolalia of tongues. But it was this is like that. What happened on the day of Pentecost is a partial fulfillment of Joel's prophecy from Joel chapter 2. It is not the ultimate or final one. None of those things happened on the day of Pentecost, and Jesus told us they will happen at the end of the age. Moreover, in his kerygma, in his sermon on the day of Pentecost, the first evangelistic sermon ever preached in the church, Peter did not say, this fulfills that. He said, this is like that. The ultimate fulfillment of Joel's vision comes in the book of Revelation, chapter 9, when those locusts are released. <clears throat> now, we have the absurdity of the Kansas City false prophets promoted by the late John Wimber and the false teacher and false prophet Mike Bickle from IHOP. They were actually teaching in London, England, at the Docklands Arena in August of uh, 19... 90, that there'd be a latter-day rain, and that this latter-day rain-empowered church, the manifest sons, the man-child, those old hyper-Pentecostal doctrines that were rejected by mainstream Pentecostalism, they would be the locusts who were going to devour. Now, in fact, Joel was making a three-tiered prophecy. He was prophesying for his own time, like all Israel's prophets. He's prophesying for the first coming of Jesus, and he's prophesying for the return of Jesus. For his own time, there were four swarms of locusts, the gnawing locusts, you know, the, the, and so forth, the creeping locusts. Nebuchadnezzar invaded Judah four times, and he carried captive the noblemen and so forth of, of, of Israel and of, of, of Jerusalem, the nobility, the, the clergy, and so forth, in four stages. These are the four swarms of locusts who invaded. So Joel was speaking for his own time about the armies of Babylon, about the Babylonians, who are a figure of Babylon the Great, the demon cohorts of Antichrist. Now, we see these demon cohorts of hell released again in Revelation 9. They are prefigured by what happened in Joel's day by the Babylonians. But they're coming in demonic power in the book of Revelation, chapter 9. We read about them. Then out of the smoke came locusts upon the earth, and power was given to them, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Well... What Mike Bickle and Paul Kane, the alcoholic homosexual, and uh, Bob Jones, the late womanizer, and so forth, what these immoral men were teaching, and these proven false prophets were teaching, was that that was the triumphant church. They are actually...
actually identifying the people in churches like IHOP who believe this garbage with the demon cohorts of hell, of Satan, of Antichrist. <laughs> They're identifying themselves with the Babylonians. That is how ridiculous IHOP is and what a false teacher, patently absurd, Mike Bickle is. Of course, he made major predictions of a revival that never came and put out a video series equipping the saints of him and Paul Kane, again, the homosexual alcoholic, making all these wild predictions that never happened. Far from a revival since August of 1990, they said it was going to come in October of 1990, backed by John Wimber. More mosques have been built in Britain than churches. Pickles have proven false prophecies, have proven to see me. These people identify themselves with these locusts. These locusts corresponded to the invading armies of Babylon, but they're figures of what happens in Revelation chapter 9. They're coming again in full power. Whatever happened in the days of Joel, or the days that Joel predicted of the Babylonian invasion, is a figure, a foreshadow of what is going to happen at the end of the age. Now, additionally, Peter, there was an outpouring of God's Spirit on the Jews at the beginning of the age of the church, a Pentecost event. We know from Zechariah chapter 12 that when Jesus comes back, there's going to be another outpouring of God's Spirit on the Jews. Zechariah 12.10, I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. They will look upon me who they have pierced. This corresponds in figure to former and latter reigns, outpourings of God's Spirit. We explain this on other teachings. There was an outpouring of God's Spirit on Israel and the Jews in Jerusalem at the beginning of the age of the church. And after the age of the church is over with the return of Christ, there will be an outpouring again. The first is a figure of the second. In the second one, is when the sun and moon will not give their light and this astral phenomena will occur. Christ will indeed return, the church will be removed, and God will return his redemptive purposes or his salvific purposes back to Israel and the Jews. I refer you back to the teaching, Joel's Army. But thank you so much for your question. God bless.